Parental discretion is advised for the following program. The Now and Then Show is made possible by assistance from the following businesses. Southern Exposure, taking care of all your hair care needs, located on Main Street in Mendocino. Emma J's Home Video Movie Rentals, located on the corner of Lansing and Ukiah Streets in Mendocino. The McCallum House Restaurant in Mendocino, reopening Friday the 13th, the night of the full moon. The Redwood Health Club, instead of candy, give health for Valentine's Day. And the Louie Louie Band, playing February 14th, Valentine's Night, at the Casper Inn. Be there and be loved. Snuggling up close with the one you love? Snuggling up tight? Well, I hope so. Listen, this is Kelly Sanger inviting you to join us for the next hour of Sugary Delight because we've got some great stuff for you tonight. We've got musician-songwriter Dan Zimmerman, and for animal lovers, we feature the Pet Peeve Corner starring Percy Houdini, and we've got Edgar, 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 and their owners. Do stick around for the Mendocino mating game when our lovely bachelorette has to choose between three hunky eligible bachelors. Hmm, who's she gonna pick? Well, the sensuous music provided by our Now and Then Orchestra should be warming them up. Until then, please welcome that tall vision of Cupid incarnate, that walkin', rockin', sweet talkin', I Bob Avery! Woo! Thank you, Donna. That was wonderful. Thank you. My goodness, everybody's so Valentine-y tonight. We got the love bug, we do, we do. And look at this great audience. How are you all tonight? Hey! Good. We're going to have lots of Valentine fun tonight. We have, as Kelly said, the Pet Peeve Corner with the uh, notorious Edgar and Percy Houdini. And I'm not sure if we want to put them together, but we'll see how it goes. And Dan Zimmerman is here. He's going to do some original work of his own. And then Kelly is going to take over the show, and she's going to be your dating game hostess for tonight. And we have a couple of more surprises for you, so stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be right back. <laughs> And now, a few words from Mikey Rooney. Hardly recognize me, huh? Mexico will change you. It allows you to bring home growths of various kinds. Some very easy to be rid of, others a little harder to discard. Sometimes the change is welcomed, only if it can be easily cut away. Although, it's nice not to be always recognized. Have a happy Valentine's Day. That's it? Yay. <laughs> you guys, you fooled me, they fooled me. They fooled me. All right. I saw you. I was getting into the song, you know. All of a sudden, I don't, you know, it just kind of went away. How are you guys all tonight? Great. Yeah? Swell. Swell? How are you doing? Full of love? Yep. Got Good. Big band. Good. Valentine's plans, any of you? Tons of heart music. Good. Good. You're all heart. All right. Welcome. To you all, to our Valentine's show. We are full of love tonight. 
And you? How are you? Hearts and flowers, yeah. You have big, uh, big Valentine plans, do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah? What are you going to do? Sing, right? I'm going to sing. At the Hill House. I'm going to sing at the Hill House with John Gilmore on piano, jazz, okay. romantic music. And what else? And stuff. Stuff. Yeah. Love stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar and spice stuff. Yeah. And all that neat things. Candy and all that. Well, this is fun. I, we're gonna have, I like these yeah. balloons. You do? And everything. Why do you like those balloons? Because they're pretty. Uh, I was going to get into like the psychology of it. You know, no, no, no. Yeah. You notice how we're color coordinated tonight? I did. And we didn't even talk on the phone today. And the chair, look, the chair goes with I everything. I like this couch, too. For Christmas, <laughs> next year. This, is, this chair is great. It's for Christmas, well, we Halloween. spring for yeah. a new couch next year, huh? Yeah, we could. Donations accepted. Anytime, anytime. Yeah. You know what we're going to do now? No. Our favorite time on the whole show? Letters. Yeah. Yeah. Anything from David yeah. Letterman this time? And Letterman, Letterman did not write this time. I want something from Joan. Well, maybe there is something from Joan here. We got a, yeah, we can talk. No, I mean, you know, <laughs> mind, I know, oh, I know, I remember, I remember. They, they remember, don't you? Yeah. Sure. Okay, I have not read all of these letters. I read a couple of them, but they keep coming in. So uh, we got a lot of letters here tonight. Ready? <clears throat> Shall we? I'm ready. Dear now and then, thanks for your perseverance. <laughs> what does that mean? What's that? Gosh. Yeah. Well, there are moments of true genius, sometimes. <laughs> I personally would like to see more animals on the show. I thought we were, I thought we were doing pretty well with the animals. Well, stick around. Right? We have animals coming up just for you. Just some, somebody had a premonition there, and after all, they represent some of our greatest talent. <laughs> we know. Keep up their good work. Thank you, Matilda. Okay, dear odd Bob. Love the show, and the co-hostess keeps me real busy when the show gets slow. Mm. How about a little more cleavage, though? I think we've had <laughs> quite enough. And would, it, yeah, and would you hike it up just a little bit more? Oh, some people are so I cynical. I can't Well, it's a forever fan. You can't turn them down. It's Og Ogling Ollie from Albion. Huh. You know him? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Dear now and then, hey, folks, you are something else. I mean, like, sometimes your show sucks, <laughs> but then sometimes I go into fits of sheer ecstasy. I don't see the difference myself, do you? <laughs> I mean, that guitar player and his pants. Oh, hey, this is... Oh, this he must is, be talking about your red pants. Yeah. Then, on the other hand, Bob Avery's teeth. <laughs> well, help. Anyway, what would the North Coast be without the Now and Then show? Thanks for getting it together occasionally. You're the greatest love and a big heart. And a, and a couple of huggies here from Lulu. Thank you, Lulu. Lulu. Oh. Lulu. I yeah. only know one Lou. Miss Lou Burrito I know Lou. two Lou's. That's, that's a Lulu. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Dear now and then, when I watch your show with my significant other, he always goes to sleep. <laughs> and our night of love is a big fizzle. Does this mean he doesn't love me? Or should I just quit watching? <laughs> <laughs> no, Sincerely, Irma Kipper. Uh, Irma, you should both show up and be on the show some night, and we'll, star, we'll take care of your significant other for you. <laughs> we got a lot of letters. A lot of letters. Look at this. This is great. This is great. This is the best we've had. Dear Now and Then, last show was a hit. Yay! Yay! All right. All right. There you go. Especially enjoyed spotlighting the local talent. I'm not sure if the meditation for world peace worked, but thanks for featuring it. Okay, it's always worth a try. Did you right? do that on the... Four o'clock in the morning. Before? I did. Yep. Everybody I, I know did. I didn't do it formally, but something inside me triggered it. And I, four o'clock went boink. You know, it was, I was so tired, but I did it, and a lot of my friends did. And I hear that they did uh, in Seattle, like 6,000 people showed up for that. Is that right? In the, in the morning, yeah. So it's changing out there, everybody. We're doing good. It's getting there. It's happening. Mendocino did it. Hang in there for peace. Well, if everybody does, it'll happen. Now and then, great Christmas show. Even the color was great. Must have been the drugs. <laughs> Yours or mine? Say no to drugs, Bob. <laughs> and you and Kelly impersonating Father Christmas in Virginia. Absolutely tops. Virginia? Yes, Virginia. There no. is a Christmas. The ever-evolving Now and Then Orchestra deserves to be paid. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Next, oh, next Christmas, it. maybe, it Does says that here. Is signed yeah. Louie Louie? No, it's not. It's no. unsigned, but I bet I know where it came from. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Dear Now and Then, I really enjoyed your last show, especially the cute drummer. What is with the drummer thing here, huh? Well, we have a cute drummer this yeah, time. Yeah, well, that was the other, the other drummer other that was there last time, yeah. Well, he's cute, too. Yeah, he's cute. Here he is. Yeah. Peekaboo! <laughs> <laughs> Is he a regular with the Now and Then Orchestra, and have, how have I missed him before? Because uh, he was not here before, and he is not here now. That's how you missed him. He was in Rolling Stone, too. I saw him. Really? In, in, a, in a Rolling Stone magazine somewhere in line at a supermarket, and I thought, God, that guy must be famous. And we were with him right here in Mendo. Right here in downtown Mendo. We have some yeah. famous people here tonight. Yeah, Bob Avery. No, Don Zimmerman and Antonio hey, Lamb and Marlene McIntyre, a bunch of famous people. Tell them yet. They have to I watch. Can, I can fun. tell them that. Uh, does he have a name and address and a phone number? Yes, he does. If so, could you let me know? <laughs> right there, Rolling Stone. Sincerely, Mavis R. Plum, and uh, happy birthday, Rolling Stone, for those of you who watch MTV. Oh. Dear Bob and Kelly, this one's dated even. Yay. All right. I like your show very much. You should have some kids on your show sometime. <laughs> you know, we should. Happy Valentine's Day. My birthday is four days after Valentine's Day. Your friend, Athena Nicole. I bet Athena's around Athena. somewhere. Hey, Athena, right there. why don't you come up here and say hey, hello to us since you wrote a yeah. letter. Thank That's a right. real nice yeah. Valentine letter you wrote. Thank, Thank you. Let me have a kid right now. Anything you want to okay. say to your friends? Okay. Look right in that camera right there and say hi to your friends. I'm very glad to be in the show. Woo! Oh, darling. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the nice, nice letter. Nice letter, too. Nice handwriting. Wonderful. Yeah. What are you going to do on Valentine's Day? Don't know. Gonna open all those Valentines? In school, do you have it in school? Mm -hmm. Who's your teacher that taught you such beautiful handwriting? Judy. Judy what? Minkus. Judy Minkus. Hi, Minkus. Judy. You did a good job. You did a good you job, did a good yeah. You did too. Thanks for coming up. Thanks. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye. Look out, Vanna White. You bet. Vanna, stand up up on aside. <laughs> We have a special guest for you now, a uh, man who is a singer and a songwriter, and he's going to perform an original piece for you. His name is Dan Zimmerman. Dan? Oh, Dan. Yay, let's hear it for Dan. <laughs> Strong our hearts can be 
why don't you follow? Yeah, we'll follow our heart. Why don't you follow? Yeah, we'll follow our heart. I know that sometimes it seems an overwhelming job to make this life. Thank you very much, Dan. That was fantastic. I want to do a little plug for Dan right here now. He's uh, making an album currently out there in Comshi at the old Philo Studios. Philo. And do uh, you know the name of the album? No, I don't. It's called The Fresh Tracks of the Wild Man. All right. Yeah, my kind of album. In about a couple of months, that'll be ready, I think. And available on records and tapes soon Save to be up. a major motion Save picture. Up. Yes. You may be wondering uh, what this is all about. <coughs> We've come to that portion of our program where we entertain the love that people have for their animals. Heart my pet. Really. Aww. It's a Valentine thing, after all, you know. But this has a twist. <coughs> a twist, yes. This, this is pet is, peeve. This is, what is it that your animal does, you know, that really peeves you off? What? Enough of this love stuff. Really? What is it? You're going to be contrary, aren't you? Anyway. <laughs> Come on. I see, I see a beautiful woman out there. Yes. Of a lovely little animal. Yes. And cradled in her Let's arms. bring in our first pet and her owner, Marlene McIntyre and Percy C. Houdini. Woo! How are you, my dear? Well, I'm fine. And you? I'm fine. Oh. Percy is always good. Look at that. What here, a darling. Just, this guy has been sitting here all night long. He loves it. He loves his yep. attention. Look at him. A star is born. You know why? Why? He grew up in the Seagull Bar. That's right. He did. That's he had, where I know him yes, from. Yes, of course. He had his own bar okay. stool. He did. You, you had a question, didn't you, Kelly, about Percy? Well, I was wondering how you came by his name. Oh, Her my name? goodness. No, it's, it's name? a he. But I thought he was a girl. And so I named him Priscilla. And Priscilla? Pretty, Priscilla. Priscilla. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon, I found out he was a <laughs> And so he became Per, P-U-R-R hyphen C, Houdini. Because he's magically per changed, Per C, huh? Houdini. Look at him. He just kind of sits here. Look at these. He looks like he's wearing oven mitts. Well, Marlene, tell us, what is it really? What does Percy do that really ticks you off? I mean... Doesn't he do anything that irritates you, aggravates you, anything? Oh, he's so wonderful. How could he? Oh. But he does do one thing. True love. What, what, what? Oh, he wakes <laughs> me up in the morning when I don't want him. Ooh. Is he, uh, is he a neutral? He is. He's in neutral. Uh -huh. so, no spray problem, man. Well, yes, he does that, too. He does. You see? Aha! Something. Not oh, the yeah. uh, glamorous uh, jewels here. He even he's has got... two phone numbers. Oh, are you? He and I co-own <laughs> the Seagull Inc., so he I has see. two owners. The I seagull mean, and how do your guests 
like him. Oh, they love him. They do? What he does, he climbs up on the roof, and he knocks on the window, and they let him in. This pretty blue eyes person. Many is the night I spent pouring my heart out to Percy at the Seagull Cellar Bar. Oh, Percy, oh, talk Percy. to me. <laughs> Look at him. He tell me, it. tell me, Percy. Oh, he could tell you, couldn't you? you could, could you hold him up and give us oh, like he's a... he's so big. Oh, the Lord. average cat I read weighs oh. seven pounds. He first weighs oh, about no, twenty. Oh no, more than that. Well, that's what the cat food said. Well, wrong cat food. <laughs> oh, Percy. But he only has. He only gets science diet. So. What, what does Percy do? What does he do? Yes. Well, he's very lazy. That's it. Yeah, he doesn't do much. <laughs> My <laughs> been, kind of cat. He's been sitting here all night, just kind of enjoying it. Yep. Well, the other thing that he does, he gets lots of strokes from people. All yeah. the guests love him. Does he frequent the bar anymore? Is uh -huh. he into drinking much? Well, Occasionally. What's he like? What's, what's your specialty? I was purse? always afraid that he'd spend too much time in the seagull bathroom, so I try to keep him out. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. Does Percy have friend. any... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> could be. Since this is Valentine's Day, does Percy have any huns? Does he have any loves? No. No loves, huh? No, he's neutral, remember? Yeah, oh. poor guy. Well... <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. Not Sorry, Purr. Well, Purr, do you, do you think uh, Purr could stand the company of a fine, mellow dog? I think we I ought think to. I think he probably yeah. could. Well, maybe we could try this little experiment since uh, we were not into uh, strictly feline affairs tonight. I mean, we Bring have a wonderful on. dog over here, right? Everyone Edgar? knows <laughs> Edgar, Edgar, Edgar. Come okay. on up, Edgar. Right. Edgar. Hi, Edgar. This is Antonio Lamb, and this is Edgar. Edgar, Edgar, show the people your beautiful face. Yeah. Do. Turn around, Edgar. Edgar. Come, Edgar, come, come here. Come here. Go to Bob. He wants to sit on the, on the couch. Oh, well, he can do that. Have a seat, Edgar. Sure. Please, if, don't yeah. let me crowd you. Tony, if you move this way a little bit, Edgar can sit up there. Yeah. And, uh, oh! No, uh, he's just seen Percy. Purr is doing something. Look at these two. Are they going to start yeah. dating now after this show? I well, that's now. that's yeah. next, the dating game, right? <laughs> what is your pet peeve, Antonio? What is it, what well, is it Edgar does? Well, Edgar is really wonderful, too. I mean, I, you know, I know just how Marlene feels <laughs> because Edgar is almost perfect, but Edgar is fickle. And I see. Edgar is probably more popular than I am, which is one of the things that really peeves me. Oh, well, you need to get out there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Edgar gets to town, I, and he walks around, and he sits and stares at tourists. He eats well, doesn't he? he? And they Lots of tourists. Their pizza and <laughs> their cookies. You can see him every morning at the uh, chocolate cookie company. That's right. With his mocha latte. That's why he looks very healthy. Yes, Edgar. You know. But Ed the other thing about Edgar that's really strange is that he has a secret stash I see. where he buries the pizza he can't eat. <laughs> yes. Where? You come well, across this when you're house cleaning? I, I can't tell you where it is, but I can tell you that uh, the fellows at Schlafer's told me about it. Oh. oh. That's yes. a pretty good clue. You know, those guys well, at Schlafer's yeah. are awful nice, I'll they tell you. Right. Speaking of Schlafer's, let's have yeah. If they leave your stash oh. alone, Edgar, they're good guys. Yeah, they do. You bet. Well, Edgar roves around quite a bit, doesn't he? You've had, have you had a hard time keeping him at home? He's such a handsome fellow. Well, he has been kidnapped, well-meaningly, several times. Mm -hmm. Because he really is <laughs> a homebody, <laughs> but people think, well, such a fine dog, why is he begging in front of the cookie company? Do it, Edgar, do it. Can he do this on camera? Is this okay? I can't do that. No, I can't either. All right, Edgar. He's facing away from the camera. Right on, Edgar. Come here, Edgar. Yes, all right. Come on. Oh, yes. Oh, boy, Edgar. Oh, look at Percy over here. He doesn't even care. Yes, no. Percy. Purse has seen enough so drunks. Much. I mean, one more dog is nothing to me. Oh, I like, I like Percy's Valentine tag oh, yes. here. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. 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 that be nice. Okay, we're going to take a short commercial break right now, and then we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tony and Edgar and Marlene and Percy. That's yeah. very nice of you to come on the show tonight. Thanks. We're delighted Thanks. to have you. It was fun. The twist, huh? Yeah. Thank you for asking us. Yeah. These are two very talented animals, obviously. And if any tourists are out there watching, remember that the Seagull Inn is a lovely place to stay. <laughs> and you too <laughs> can sleep with Percy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll be right back.
we go with. Yes. Yes. Every year about this time, I like to give my girlfriend a special present. Mm -hmm. Something we both can enjoy. <laughs> Something that'll add weight to our relationship. Mm -hmm. That's why I give her heavy beer. Mm -hmm. The brew that adds weight to any occasion. Hey, yeah. Ah! <laughs> and now it's blowing. Here to tell you to stay tuned for the dating game coming up next on the Now and Then Show. Well, I met you one year ago. You were bringing my dinner to me. You stood by the corner, you waited for my order to come your way. I just did not know what to say because you my walls of fire turn my head around I every time listening to the sound of my heart Beating with your love and your heart Beating in my love and your heart Being in love Being in love Being in love Nice to hear that again. Yes. Welcome back. Now we come to a very exciting time on the Now and Then show. You ready? I am. Yeah, I bet you I are. I am ready. We have a number of other people who are ready also. This is the Now and Then show's version of the dating game for Valentine. Woo! We have with us tonight a charming bachelorette. Blatchlorette? That's right. Blatchlorette, right? And three charming bachelors. <laughs> and who else to work out the dating game syndrome but Kelly? Well. You're going to do this, are you? I do, I do. I think this is a great idea, and we're going to have a good time with this. Now, you guys, nobody knows who is on either side of the screen. We're going to save that till the very end, see who's who this delectable delightful, delicious, delirious little bachelorette is going to pick. And we're going to find that out soon. We have prizes for the people that don't win the delightful date with our bachelorette. And we'll, we'll come to that at the end. Can I get a prize? Honey, you are the prize. <laughs> Bob, you are the prize. Uh-oh. Anyway, you guys, Watch it's, out, bachelors. <laughs> it's hard to pull this off in a small town. You know how people chit-chat and talk. But I think we have sufficiently disguised everyone's voices. No one has any idea what's going on except for you, the audience. Oh, you guys know. No, no telling. Just no like telling. 
And so we're going to start off with a Mendocino version of the mating game. <laughs> oh, starting with, could you say hello to our lovely bachelor? Now, we don't want to say the name because we don't want to give it away. So bachelor number one, could you give our lovely bachelorette a sweet hello for Valentine's Day? Yes, hello, bachelor number one, bachelorette. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> bachelorette number one, pretty nice. And bachelor number two, could you say hello? Uh, happy Valentine's Day, bachelor. That was happy. a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what you doing over there, bachelor number three? Can you say hello? Buenas noches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to hand this over to the bachelorette of the evening. Go ahead, let's ask a few tempting questions to these men, see what they come up with. I just happen to have a few questions here. All right, let's hear them. Okay, let's see. Bachelor number two. <laughs> My ideal male would combine a combination of Richard Gere, Woody Allen, and Max Hedrum. <laughs> I'm hoping this might describe you, but um, if it doesn't, could you maybe pick a few stars or people that I would know that could describe yourself? and? Uh, Give me a chance to know what you're really like. <laughs> Caught him. <laughs> I'm, I'm working. Uh, there we go. I think, Ma I think Max Headroom. <laughs> Max um, Headroom <laughs> would pretty much describe me in my when I'm alone. <laughs> okay. Well, that's interesting. Bachelor number three. How about you? Could you describe yourself in the um, terms of people I might a know? A combination of, of those that you mentioned, you mean? Oh, it could be a combination of anybody. It doesn't have to be them. How about Soupy Sales? Go! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, too. That's a good one. Okay. Bachelor number one. <laughs> what do you first notice about an attractive woman? Her walk? her talk, or whether or not she notices you? Whether or not she notices me. That's the first thing you notice, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> if they're looking, you're looking. Okay, all right, we got that one. All right, now, bachelor number three. You're outside my bedroom window. It's late at night. You'd like to be inside. What song would you sing to persuade me to open that window up and let you in? And could you sing a few bars for that? <coughs> could you repeat that? <laughs> Come on, you've been here before. <laughs> You're outside my bedroom window. You'd like to come inside? Yes. You want to sing me a song to persuade me to open up the window and let you in? Now, what song would you sing? And could you sing a few bars of it, please? Well, I th I, um, I'm, o I'm old enough to appreciate the uh, early 60s uh, music. And I think there was a song. Well, not up to singing. I think, I think I'm it was like, um, I'm still sleeping up, inside that bedroom right open now. Up, you know? That's it. Wasn't oh, that that's, it? Great, that's yeah. a great song. But don't yeah. break the glass. That's it. <laughs> break the glass. That's one way of getting in. Okay, bachelor number one, it's your turn. What would you sing? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. It's your Kelly turn. Kelly didn't get me ready for this one. Um, <laughs> what song would I You're sing? You're never ready for this one. <laughs> that's a tough one. <sighs> Boy. I guess I would, I would sing um, Bring It On Home To Me. But I'm already home. Let's hear a few bars of that, Joshua. Yeah, can you I'm sing that? Home. I'll tell you what. I'm going to refer that to Kelly because she sings that song better than anybody. Oh, I so, Kelly, would you do that for me, please? Give me a line, Kelly. Oh, yes. Yeah. In fact, let's, let's start up the band. Yeah, play, the, play a little song. Okay, you're in there. That bedroom window is open. All right. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, guys. Uh, bachelor number two. You're out alone on an evening and you're looking for a companion. You don't want to be alone. Say you're at the Casper Inn. <laughs> <laughs> you're in trouble. 
What are you looking for? You first look for a pretty face, you look for a raucous laugh, or are you looking for a quick wit? <laughs> I'd like all three. You like all three? <laughs> yes, I would. Does that mean three separate women, and you want all three in one? <laughs> Well, all these choices. <laughs> I, I would like uh, them all in one. All in one. Yes. Okay. All righty. Okay, bachelor number one. Would Let's you? go back to you. We know you can't sing, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what can you window. do, bachelor? You did get in the window. <laughs> you brought along the tape recording of Kelly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to know now is, do you prefer a woman to be passive, possessive, or permissive? I guess not permissive. I'm afraid of AIDS. But I'm thinking... <laughs> 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 you to appreciate my humor for that. Come on. Captive. Captive? Captive? This is a family show. Let's not Captive. I love them. Captive. Quirky things here. Bondage. Bondage. <laughs> <laughs> These are all friends of Kelly's. We want you to know. <laughs> I think you can't take them anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor number three, how about you? How do you feel about women? Do you like them being passive, possessive, or permissive? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely permissive. 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 <laughs> permissive. He's not afraid of AIDS. <laughs> Actually, that should be the first question of the uh, dating game in the 80s is do you have AIDS? No. Um. <laughs> okay, bachelor number two. You step out of the shower and you find yourself face to face with a TV camera, and this is nationwide. You have got nothing on. Would you reach for a face cloth, a hand towel, a bath towel, or a beach towel? Your modesty. Number two. Uh, I'd reach for a trophy. <laughs> a trophy? <laughs> Does that mean we should award you a trophy? Because <laughs> you're standing there with nothing on in front of TV or what? Why would you reach for a trophy? That's kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we're bragging. Continue on, Bachelor. Okay. Boy, I don't know. We're getting slim down here. We're getting real slim. <laughs> One more question here. What do we have? Well, this one could be, um, well, let's see if these guys are up to it. Um, <laughs> bachelor number three, I know you're up to it. What's more important to you, position or location? <laughs> hey, definitely position. I don't care where the location is. <laughs> I knew he'd say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm that kind of a guy, you know. <laughs> I knew it. Bachelor number one, do you want to give a try at that one? Sure, I think location is important. Location yeah, is more do important. Ask, do you want to know why I think location Yeah, I'd love to know why. I really yeah, I'd like to know why. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I could say because bachelor number three said it was uh, position, but I won't say that. I think no. location is important. I think that there's a lot of things that are uh, important to us, and the location is one of those things. I think uh. there's one reason why we're <laughs> located in Mendocino. I mean, that's important. That's romantic. And I think there's locations. I, I think I would like, look in terms of love making, for example. I think that I would rather make love in, in Port of Our Art or something, as opposed to <laughs> Juneau, Alaska. I think that's probably important. Location is is probably more important than position. Although position is fun, <laughs> but that's very short term. Location. I like this question. Going on and on. Okay, you've had enough time. <laughs> <laughs> now this one he had a, he had a you're, upsta <laughs> you're upstaging the rest of us. <laughs> Bachelor number two, you're just kind of stuck there in the middle. Why don't you? Can you say anything about this question? It seems to be getting uh, quite a bit of response here. What do you think about it? Position or location? Um, I, I think I think lo location is much more important than position, location. because once you're in the correct location, absolutely, the position's irrelevant, right? Well, <laughs> you're, you're endless. <laughs> endless. Yeah. yeah.
we're going to give our lovely lady here, our delectable maiden fair, time to think about her choice and what she's going to decide. And we'll tell you where her date is going to be and who with after a short commercial break. And huh? uh, don't forget the magic word was uh, sold for $100. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with you, okay? Stick around. <laughs> too high to drive home? If that's the case, then you should drink heavy beer. It won't let you get high. In fact, it may not let you get up at all. version of the mating game. Before we bring our bachelors out, I would like to introduce our lovely bachelorette to you all, in case you don't know her. Some of you recognize her and some of you don't. She is the lovely Miss Pepper. She's an accomplished horsewoman. She has great experience. She's been mo she's a professional model for years and years, born in Rochester, New York. Please say hello to Pepper. <laughs> Pepper, um, the moment has come. What are you? Who are you going to pick? Where Where are you going going to? And who are you going to go with? Will it be Bachelor Number One, Bachelor Number Two, or Bachelor Number Three? Well, Kelly, this is really tough. You can do it, Pep. It's real. Tough. Come on. I don't. Know. I mean, in Mendocino, it's hard enough to find one guy, let alone three. I know. So, I mean, to pick one is it's tough. Um. I think I'm going to take bachelor number one. Ooh! All right. All right. Well, our uh, visual audio audience has a good view of who that bachelor is. I want to know. I want to know, I want to know what impressed her about bachelor number one. I do, one. too. What, well, let's let's introduce the two first. Who didn't? Losers? Yeah, no, losers is oh, not yeah. a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's Valentine's Day, and there's a sweetheart out there for everyone. And bachelor number two, you're going to meet yours someday too. Let's introduce him. He is a man who loves sailing, windsurfing, and his daughter, and he loves taking chances. It takes a lot of guts to get up here with all of his cr crazy crew. Let's have a big round of applause for Fred Evans. Come on out, Fred. Meet, meet your bachelor. Woo! Fred. Hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. Hi, Next time, baby, huh? Yeah. I love all the trolls you know. That was great. Fred, have a seat. Fred, 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 have a seat. Over here. Have a seat. Yeah. This is it. We have a lovely prize for you, Fred, for coming on the show, and that is a day courtesy of the Redwood Health Club. Oh, right. Really? We work out for you at the health club for two. So, thanks for coming on. Good. Bachelor number three. Well, bachelor number three, you didn't get it around this time, but don't give up hope because there's a beautiful woman out there waiting for you. 
Let's introduce. That's a promise. That's right. <laughs> he's deep, he's yeah. dark, and he's handsome. Bachelor number three is a contractor by trade, semi-retired, a fun-loving bartender at Albion River Inn, <laughs> that wonderful place. This bartender pours a mean snifter full. Let's have a big round of applause <laughs> for Mr. Tony Cook. <laughs> this isn't quite fair. You know, these two, Pepper, were, Pepper also now appearing in uh, bars and restaurants <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> these, two work, these two worked together, it wasn't quite fair, but they did manage to pull one over. On, nobody knew who was doing what. It was pretty sneaky. No, we never do it, Albion, anyway. anyway. Uh, we have a console. I don't know where my work goes. <laughs> you too, do? I didn't either. <laughs> you didn't know? Well, now you know. Uh, we have a consolation prize for you, too, Tony. Unfortunately, where's my producer? I forgot what it is. Tell him later. Oh, 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 it's, uh, uh, what is it for? Oh, for, oh, that's right, that's right. Sorry, Mitch. It's uh, four free tapes <laughs> rental at M&J Videos in uh, Mendocino, which is a great place to go and get your hair cut, too. Mitch, we love you, Mitch. You do a great job. <laughs> four free tapes, four free tapes for you from Mitch. You. All right, you're that's welcome. Not, that's not shabby. And meanwhile, ladies, uh, now appearing in uh, Albion River Inn is Mr. Tony Cook, Saturday nights. He's yes, working and sorry. he's there, so you can catch his act there. He's and now, <laughs> let's introduce. Free drinks, free. That's right, free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that, Peter? Hear that, Flurry? That's, that's Friday. Friday. <laughs> that's, no, that's when, that's when, when John was working. working. Yeah. Yeah. I don't work Friday nights. <laughs> we have for you, Miss Pepper, a silvery fox, bachelor number one. This man has a passion for indoor and outdoor sports. <laughs> Green-eyed and good-looking, <laughs> Mr. Redwood Health Club himself, Carl Hayward! Oh, right. Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh, I think this is just inspiring. What's, what's going to happen to these lucky people? Well... Are you ready for your dream I'll date? My tapes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Our dream date. Tell the truth. I love it. it. Was it. The I love it. That did it. It was the Giorgio over girl. The, over the curtain. And the Corvette too. <laughs> yeah. Pepper, you <laughs> have <laughs> Pepper and <laughs> Carl. <laughs> you have. You I mean, have. I didn't even talk about horse racing. I mean, I'm horse racing. Horse? Oh. Jesus, that was important. Well, that's something that <laughs> that that's something that you. I had it all prepared. I it's it's no, 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 no location, Carl. No location. No, 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 Would you like to hear your your dream Tell us date? About our dream your date. dream date. There's a continental taking us off. <laughs> Courtesy <laughs> of Mr. Tim and Rob at the McCallum House, the lovely McCallum House on Albion Street, which Ooh. also has an inn. They have appetizers and a beautiful bar, Greywell Bar. We get stay overnight. No. <laughs> Carl, Carl. My mother may be watching the show. <laughs> what about his mother? Hold out. Yeah, his mother. <laughs> this is your dream day. This is courtesy of uh, Valentine's special for dinner for two at the lovely McCallum House. That's wonderful. Oh, anyway, <laughs> you're going to have a beautiful dinner and a delightful movie courtesy of the now and then show and wow. we thank the redwood um, health club and m and j video thanks mitch you're a swell guy <laughs> carl profile all right and we also thank tim and rob at the mccallum house for their generosity and fred and tony and fred and tony uh, thank you guys and thanks for joining us huh have a good time have a good time let's have a big round of applause for our lovely bachelors and bachelorette all right. <laughs>
Now a final statement from Mikey Rooney. Have you noticed the change in Mendocino since you moved here? When I first arrived, the hippies hung out on Main Street. There were lots of parking spaces. Almost everyone knew each other. And the celebrative functions seemed to be alive. Almost as if they had a life of their own. The Albion People's Fair. The dances at Toad Hall. The infamous Seagull Gong Show. And of course, the party of parties, Drag Queen Debutante Ball. All the past local functions seem to have one thing in common, the energetic input of locals. But where have all the locals gone? Gone to cities, most of them. But locals come and locals go. And those who come should further the show. Add life where the spark has departed create a happening where stagnation has farted. If things don't liven up around this little town, there might soon only be found ice cream lickers, jewelry store browsers, headland hikers, and overnight housers. So let's have more functions for locals where we can exhibit our independence and relish in our oneness. From across the bar Made me feel real appealing Like I was a big movie star So I thought I might walk over Maybe ask her to dance Seize that passing moment At least grab that ounce of chance Oh, hi. Blind Lemon Evans here, telling you to stay tuned for James Maxwell talking about the Valentine Ball at Crown Hall on Valentine's Night, February 14th. Stay tuned. But I stopped in my tracks, thinking she'd never believe I had other things on my mind. Stay tuned. I gather that your admonition worked, right? <laughs> we got to go fast because we're running rapidly out of time. Uh, I would like to introduce one last guest who is going to tell us very quickly about something you can do on Valentine's evening, Saturday, February 14th. I'd like to introduce to you right now, James Maxwell. Jim? Yo, Jimmy. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what, what do you great got? Great energy. What do you got tonight? here? What's this? Um, What's this? this is uh, to advertise the Bow Arts very first annual Bow Arts Masquerade Valentine's Day Ball, occurring on uh, <laughs> Valentine's Day, um, and uh, it is a benefit for the symphony. Um, we here have uh, such wonderful culture when it comes to all the great musicians, but a lot of times we only see the cabarets and every now and then we have a symphony uh, function that now we can cross pollinate and so what we're doing is we're having a <laughs> yes um, we're having a number of uh, uh, folk artists actually performing music for the symphony benefit and the symphony is going to be doing some music there too quite a bit in fact but it's uh, more important uh, a chance for all the media to get together and to have uh, a people's party of primarily all the artists on the coast. And it is a, a Valentine's Day masquerade ball, and it's uh, thanks for having me on and to well, invite for, everybody to come. Thanks for sticking with us here. Yeah. Oh, hey, How it's much? been great. And what uh, time okay. and where? It's at Crown Hall, 
It's uh, between 7 p.m. and midnight. It costs you $8 to become a member of the symphony. Now, you have to be a member to get in, but also you can have a uh, possibility for a raffle ticket. Pa a, a raffle will be done that same evening, and um, so it's win? $8. What do you win? I'm not going to say, because it's like a masquerade. Oh. It's not a date with It's Deborah, a mask though. prize. No. That's been given away. <laughs> but there, is, there are some pretty spicy prizes. Yeah. Spicy poster you got here. Who designed that lovely artwork there? This is done by our own Bob Avery. Yeah. Oh, but I have to. The, the artwork was done by this fellow right here. His name is William Bradley, and he did it a long time ago, about the turn of the century. Well, Max, you're and I stole it. You're an artist in your own right. Are you showing anywhere here, Jim Maxwell, whose art is in the Seagull Cellar Bar upstairs? Yes, Jim Maxwell's art is in the Wonderful. Seagull Cellar Bar upstairs, and you should see it. Yeah. Yeah. It's marvelous. Okay, we have to go. I'm sorry, we've run out of. Thank you, thank Jim, you. very much. Thank you, enjoy. Thank it. you very See much next. to Marlene McIntyre and Percy Houdini and to Tony Lamb and Edgar. Edgar, 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 Edgar yes, and to uh, Pepper and Tony and Carl and Fred and Mike and Blythe and Tara and everybody. And Dan. And Dan, thanks. Yeah, for can't it. forget Dan. Yeah, he hey. performed right. And to all of our crew and to all of you, our wonderful audience, we hope that you have a sweet and wonderful Valentine. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back sometime around April Fool's Day with the next Now and Then show. April Fool's. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, nice for being earrings. here. From Pepper. And if you're bored on Which Valentine's one? Day, come and hear me sing, please, with At John Hill House Gilmore. with John Gilmore Before on Valentine's Day. Before you come to Max's party, come right. and see okay. me. Okay. Lots of things to do. Let's go. Okay. We'll see you around April Fool's. Bye, Mom. Bye. Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. Bye, kids. Bye, kids.